Hi everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to build the most cost effective solid state drive to be used on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So this is an Anker NVMe enclosure and this is called the Power Expand. And this will accept any internal NVMe drive and this combination is going to be much cheaper than any equivalent solid state drive that comes as one unit. This is because we can choose the right solid state drive for us and when we combine the price of the solid state drive and the Anker drive itself, then this will often come out more than 10, 15% less than an equivalent Samsung drive. So this is well worth doing and it's extremely simple to do. So what we often find is that the price of an internal NVMe drive, which is £68.98, plus the price of this enclosure, which is £29.99, is gonna be far less than the equivalent Samsung T5, which is £108.22 at the time of recording. The first thing we're going to do is take out the packaging of this NVMe drive. This does look a little bit intimidating because this is supposed to be normally be used within laptops or motherboard computers. So that's not something that the average end user is going to use. But all we have to do is take it out of its packaging and then we can install it into this drive. The packaging is really simple. All we have is this little drive that we need to just pull out like this. Just make sure you handle it by the edges and not touch the connectors. And you can see here that we have a one terabyte Western Digital SN550, and this is an entire terabyte of space. So we're gonna be putting this solid state drive into this enclosure. So all we need to do is release the enclosure like this, and then we'll have access to the tray itself. We're gonna use a standard Phillips head screwdriver to remove this mounting screw. So in order to install the solid state drive, we just need to line up the key here. So you can see there's a little notch there, and that lines up to this notch right here. So basically I'm gonna plug this in like this, and just kind of gently slide it in, no pressure at all. And you'll see that the solid state drive will stick up at an angle. This is completely normal. We're gonna be pushing it down using the mounting screw. So we've got our screw here. So I'm just gonna gently screw this in. And this is now flush with the solid state drive. So now we can place our solid state drive cover over this until it clicks. So what's really great about this arrangement is that if you ever wanted to switch the solid state drive for something larger, let's say you wanted a two terabyte drive, you can easily swap them around. You can even reuse the old one in another computer. If you have a Windows computer that you have a motherboard for, you can just slot that in there. And what's also cool about this cable is that we have the USB-C end, which goes into the solid state drive like so. But then we also have this kind of call adapter, which allows us to adapt whether this goes into a USB-A, so if you want to plug it into a desktop computer, or you can convert it into the USB-C. So I'm going to be keeping it as a USB-C and then inserting this into my M1 MacBook Air. So I'm recording this screen for my M1 MacBook Air, and what I'm going to do now is plug the USB-C end into my MacBook. So I can see that this drive has now appeared on my desktop as a mounted external drive. However, what I'm going to do is to go into the top right hand corner and then type in the word disk utility to be able to format this hard drive. So you'll see on this left sidebar that this is the Western Digital Solid State Drive here. We have this mounted partition here, which is an XFAT one. So what you normally want to do is to make sure that we can see all devices. So click view and then show all devices. And then you'll see the relationship between the volume and the device. So normally what you want to do is to select the parent device here and we're going to do a format. What I'm going to do is rename this one Western Digital 1TB. I'm going to format this as APFS because that is the normal Apple formatting. If you wanted something that's more compatible with Windows and Mac as well, you could choose XFAT. I'm going to set this up as an APFS drive and click Erase. So once it's done, you can just press Done. And then we have our WD1 terabyte here. I want to look at the information here and we have one terabyte of space set up as APFS. So when you have an external drive set up as APFS, you can always go to system preferences. And what you can do is go to time machine and then select backup disk and we can select this WT1 terabyte. Because we set it up as an APFS drive, this is gonna be compatible with time machine here. And what that's gonna do is to back up your entire computer onto this drive for you. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.